our own little Sonny Hostin was in the courtroom yesterday. So we're going to, we're going to cross-examine her. Yes. So, uh, my first question is, what shade of orange is his face? I have to tell you, I have to Would tell you. Would it be like you. more of a tangerine or a burnt sienna? Give us it's, some specifics. It's a burnt sienna. I uh -huh. have never seen him in person. <laughs> I didn't realize he was that orange. Like, you know, Anna's been making jokes about how yeah, orange he yeah. is. Is it like her you dress? You he's orange. He, uh, it's about like this, yes. Yeah. It's almost like a radioactive orange, and it's very shocking to see in person. It really is, because he's a tall person. And he's also a little thinner now. I don't he's know awesome. if he's taking the shot or he's whatever. He's on Ozempic, you know it. Yeah, but he's, he's, he's actually looking thinner. But let me set... I'm going to play more from where that came from in just a second, but <laughs> Sonny Hostin on ABC's The View there mocking Donald Trump brutally so but justifiably so and there's not much to say other than that's funny except that it is strange and I don't mention this enough it is strange that the strongman leader that MAGA has coalesced around to use maybe language they would use the man's man the alpha male <laughs> that's gonna lead this movement into an authoritarian future is as vain as Trump is and who lathers themselves with so much makeup that they're that orange. And it is bizarre. An elderly orange man like Donald Trump. While you're watching the rest of this, please make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. Then we'll move on to some other Trump related things in this segment as well the stage because I, I think people that haven't been in the courtroom don't understand the gravity of it. You know, you've got this very large courtroom and it's an older courtroom. And you've got a in God we trust seal right next to it, the American flag right next, across from the American flag, the New York state flag, a judge presiding with gray hair right in, in between these flags, and then in front of them, a former sitting president in front of all of that for the first time in U.S. history. So that gives you a little bit of the gravity that actually I felt. Yeah. But then, here's the tea. Okay, so he is unlike any defendant sitting in a courtroom that I've ever seen. Because He's stretching out like this. Yeah. He's like fist bumping with attorneys. He's like stretching. He took a little nap. Like, most defendants do not do that. They are instructed to sit there, pay attention, look with some humility. That's not Donald so Trump. So out of all the dwarfs, the seven dwarfs, is he grumpy, sleepy, or dopey? <laughs> I think he's sleepy and dopey combination. Okay, good. That's, that was my impression. The other thing I was allegedly say, farty. <laughs> I did not smell the you're farting. you down. Okay, and we'll stop it there on that. And before moving on, his behavior, she's correct, has been strange in the courtroom, of course, reportedly him constantly sleeping despite his denials. And then when he's not sleeping, he is actually more engaged than many criminal defendants would be with him nudging his lawyer when Stormy Daniels is revealing particularly embarrassing details about their situation um and trump situation in particular and wanting the lawyer to object more and then ugh, back to sleeping very interesting dichotomy there but moving on staying on the subject of trump something we've been hearing back uh sort of in the political discourse as it should be about trump is the fear and really just almost a hundred percent prediction that Trump will not accept the election results in uh, November if he ends up losing to President Joe Biden. Now, it's not really even speculative. It's just sort of a given that he's not going to. But what could come of that is very frightening. And so the fact that this is once again being discussed among the mainstream media and elsewhere is causing right wing media to do damage control of sorts. And here, Laura Trump, who's, of course, now a co-chair of the Republican National Committee, she gets asked by this Newsmax host about this. And I want you to observe just the dishonesty, the amount of dishonesty she's able to pack in to this one minute moment. And we talked about this already on the bonus show. You can get the bonus show by clicking the join button below, but I wanted to bring it to the whole audience because it's been sitting with me and bothering me just how dishonest Lord Trump's going to be here. In the, in the past 36 to 48 hours, you have Barack Obama, Joe Biden, now Hillary Clinton saying something to, you, to the effect of if Trump, if Trump loses, he will not accept the, the results. Is that coordinated? 
I think, isn't it all coordinated? Isn't all of this stuff coming from one place? Uh, it's pretty obvious that Donald Trump does accept election results, even despite the fact that it was uh, a very questionable election in 2020, because Joe Biden is unfortunately sitting in the Oval Office today. What Donald Trump has said, and I think is exactly right, is that we should have free, fair, and transparent elections. And unfortunately, Eric, there are millions and millions of Americans out there who don't feel like they can trust our electoral process. We can't function as a country like that. So he said, yes, if I feel like this is a fair election, if I feel like you guys didn't interfere in any way, like they are obviously trying to do with all these bogus cases against him, then no problem. I'm happy to accept the results of the election. So I'll stop it there, but let's go through the points that she made and then we'll get on to a pretty bonkers story about Trump. But she said that this is all coordinated. The question was, is this all coordinated, Laura? And she said, isn't it all? Meaning the discussion. She's saying the discussion about people being afraid of the fact that Trump won't accept if he loses like he didn't in 2020. That is some coordinated effort. And I don't know who she's alluding to when she said it is all coming from one source, but somehow that's the theory. And in reality, really, it hasn't stopped. So how could it be a coordinated effort to start such a conversation? Because people since 2020 have understood if Trump ran again, he wouldn't accept the loss. And we've seen some of his uh, minions doing it. Carrie Lake in her election. This is something that has become a fundamental characteristic of the MAGA movement. So the discussion about it is just a natural response to that very dangerous phenomenon, not some coordinated effort to smear Trump. She also said that Trump does accept election results as shown by Biden becoming president, which is just not at all how making a logical argument works. Uh, so Trump doesn't. He didn't even accept, and this is gonna sound strange if you're not familiar with what I'm referring to when I say this, but he didn't even accept the 2016 election results. And what I mean is, after he won, he won, okay? So presumably he would be excited to accept the results. He said, yeah, I won the Electoral College, but I also should have won the popular vote, but undocumented immigrants were counted in uh, such a large fashion that fraudulently Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. He ordered a commission to investigate it. Of course, those claims were not substantiated because they were lies. But in 2016, he didn't accept the legitimacy of the popular vote. In 2020, he didn't accept the result altogether because he lost. We know if he loses, he will not accept the election result. And he'll probably have some theory, even if he were to win, as to why he didn't uh, win by more in uh, November, if that happens, God forbid. And the metaphor or the analogy that I made yesterday was that imagine a situation where someone comes into your house and they shoot you with a gun and then they leave. When they come back with a gun again, if you were to be frightened that they're going to try to kill you, it wouldn't be rational or reasonable for them to say, oh my gosh, you're so crazy. I don't want to kill you because I didn't kill you last time. That's the argument being made here about Biden coming to office. It's not proof that Trump accepted the election results just because Biden became president. It's proof that Trump failed at trying to block the peaceful transfer of power, something he's now being prosecuted for because he tried to through schemes like the fake elector scheme. Next time, he tries to do something that wildly anti-democratic. We may not have people to deny, refuse, like Mike Pence, for example, in some of these efforts. Uh, he said Trump wants, or she said Trump wants free and fair elections. Obviously, Trump is the biggest threat right now to free and fair elections. And then this talking point drives me up a wall every time. Lots of people don't think that our elections are free and fair. Laura, you can't, you can't do that. You cannot as a movement, convince a bunch of people of something, you and your cohort of MAGA leaders convincing MAGA voters of something, and then justify your telling of those lies by the fact that people believe the thing you've convinced them to believe. It's just so illogical and dishonest. But moving on from that, a story broke about Trump trying to get the oil industry to fundraise for him and give him lots and lots of money in exchange for things, a quid pro quo, in a sense. And Fox News reported on this, then we'll discuss. Trump reportedly made a big promise to oil CEOs. What did he tell him? This is according to the Washington Post. 
Um, he said, give me a billion dollars and I will cut Biden's emission rules and I'll lift the freeze on natural gas permits and other things. What do you mean? Give me a billion dollars to his campaign? Fundraising. Yeah. <laughs> I need your money and your support, that's and I'll do things that'll help you. Yeah. Yeah. He reportedly <laughs> met with executives from the big companies, Exxon, Chevron, and some of the smaller players. Yeah, so she's referring to this reporting here from Axios. Foreign President Trump and the oil industry are sketching out audacious plans to begin dismantling President Biden's fossil fuel regulations on January 20th, 2025. At Mar-a-Lago last month, Trump asked some of the industry's top executives to help raise $1 billion for his campaign as he outlines his pro-drilling agenda for second term, the Washington Post first reported. And as was outlined by that Fox host, the message from Trump is, give me a bill, a billion dollars, and I will do X, Y, and Z for you and your uh, industry buddies. Now, obviously, that is the ickiest part of politics, and I don't think you're supposed to do that at a quid pro quo like that. If you raise a billion dollars, I'll do these different things as president. I think that is not exactly how fundraising is supposed to work. And also MAGA identifies so much with Trump's promising of uh, uprooting or draining the swamp, I should say, right? Getting out the corruption. That's the epitome of the swamp right there. Now, I will note that yes, Biden has made some incredible advancements on the effort to address climate change historic the inflation production act including in it alongside lowering prescription drug costs healthcare expansions and other things it also is the largest investment in green energy in the history of the world and so that's true that's great and we will be seeing emissions cut over the coming years because of that legislation and other executive orders by biden and also the entitlement from these oil executives, where they want even more, even though they're already overseeing right now more oil production than any time in any country in the history of the world. Right now, under Joe, anti-drilling Joe, apparently, oil production's at record highs. So y'all can just calm down with wanting a fascist just so you can have a little bit more drilling. Goodness gracious. I'll leave it there. You can watch one of my other recent videos by clicking up there and let me know what you thought of all that in the comments.